dear friends we are in dhammapada stanza number 201 let us start our dhamma sermon stanza number 201 is jayam veeram pasavati dukham seti parajitu upasanto sukham seti hitta jaya parajaya brief meaning of this stanza is victory breeds hatred the defeated live in pain happy live the peaceful live given a victory and defeat is the brief meaning of this stanza in here there are few things that we should keep in your mind jayam veeram pasavati jayam veeram veeram is very important word in here the second one dukkham seti parajito dukkham the word dukkham veeram dukkham jayam veeram pasavati jayam jayam mean the persons the situation of the person who won the game jayam when someone was able to win the game the loser and sometimes other competitions com- competitors have some kind of jealous for that person vera means hatred so victory breed hatred how when someone win in the game that person have hatred from others because he already defeated few of them all of them are not happy about the victory of that person this is the nature in this human world and the second one dukkham seti parajitu also the person who did it that one have so many sorrowful thoughts that person is living with unhappy thoughts it is also very general thing then what is the advice of the buddha upasanto sukham seti hitva jaya parajyam you should abandon victory and defeat both that kind of person can live happily and peacefully why that person does not have any reasons to gain uh, hatred and also there is no reasons to be worried there is no reasons to be worry or suffer or unhappy to develop an happy status because even though he is not accepting uh, to win or to defeat victory or defeat these any of these things are not in his mind so he is live he can live he can he he lives happily and peacefully this is the nature this is the reality if we are willing to gain happiness we should have this kind of mentality ourselves these systems are giving us a very very practical explanation we all we all have this exp- explanation ourselves we all have been experienced this in this world might be when you were in the school college or universities even in generally in the society when you have some achievements yourself you know how would be the nature you are happy but there are so many angry people of your achievements because the hidden part is jealous hidden part is jealous sometimes 
perhaps you might don't know anything about it. some person some some people are increase in their unhappy thoughts jealous of you you don't know anything but they have unwholesome thoughts for you particularly they have jealous why because they they were having some thoughts to have the same status that we have to maintain but they were not able to achieve those goals so they instant of developing their courage and determination they are ready to increase their jealous to others this is this happening because of their ignorance but unfortunately no one can treat anyone's that foolishness so Buddha is giving us to think this opportunity. Buddha is giving this stanza to think ourselves. We don't want to pay attention to outside, pay inside. How would be your nature? If you lose something, if there is some competition among these competitors, if you lose something that someone, someone already win, how would be your mind? Your mind would be upset, jealous, and you ready to develop anger to that person. It's happening. So this is not something that we should develop as Buddhist followers. We are Buddhist followers. We are not trying to gain our happiness thinking outside. We are we are living, following the guidance of the Buddha. We are living according to the guidance of the Buddha. And we are focusing inside, not outside. We are focusing inside to gain our happiness ourselves. In particular stanza, the Buddha explained, you must mean Bhyamate Lokancha. Loka Samadhancha, Loka Nirodhancha, Loka Nirodhagamini Patipadhancha Pandipi. Dear my disciples, I would like to say the world and the origin of world, cessation of world, all these things through this uh, length of body, length of body. Length of through this length of body, the Buddha was explaining the origin of all these suffering and happiness. The world, which is belongs to the world, the word world, everything Buddha explained through this length of body. This is the explanation. So the world is not outside. The world is in here with us. Where I am, I am in the world. Why I am suffering is the nature of this world. Why I am happy, it is the it is nature of two, the world. So the world is not something outside. The world is in here with you. Therefore, people attention to take care of this world. People attention to take care of this world. So in here, Buddha, Buddha is giving ad, advice for us. Upasanto sukam seti hitva jaya parajayam. Don't work for your victory or for your lose, to lose anything. These are the hopes that you are maintaining. These hopes are not helpful, healthy. Why? When you are not able to get that, when you are not able to victory, to get that victory, to gain that victory, you, you will be upset. Then you are suffering. Therefore, Buddha said, don't think about victory, or defeat. How we should live? Upasanto sukhang seti. 
maintain equanimity all the time it means not to it means you're not supposed to have goal that is not the meaning in here as buddhist palava there are goals for our life particularly as we know we are following the teachings of the buddha to achieve to gain wisdom that is our goal to achieve wisdom is our goal so therefore the buddhist practitioner must have goal for their life this goal actually not just buddhist follower even all the human beings and all other living beings also have goal for their life generally we can see everybody working for their happiness their goal is to be happy they are some of them are going to school for to be happy some of them are in the university to be happy some of them are working having different kind of uh, uh, task to be happy in this manner we all have a goal that is to be happy so we are working for that then we have goal as human beings and as living beings as particularly as buddhist followers we have goal so this is not something the buddha has mentioned in not to have goal no the, the, there should be goal for our life but we how to have mind some qualities increase in our mind what is that equanimity equanimity not to become a victor or defeater this is very important you're not supposed to go any of these extreme uh, extremes if you are in any of these uh, any of these extremes then you are suffering no one can do anything for that because they're suffering why the world is not something that all the time that you can win that all the time that you can defeat this is the nature if you win victory breed hatred this is universal law as you know in anguttara nikaya dhamma niyama dhamma tasutta the buddha said whether buddha appears in this world or not this dhamma will exist dhamma is as already established the dhamma is not something coming from the buddha that is not the creation of the buddha dhamma is already established in this world so one of this rule victory breeds hatred it is a universal law it is not the law created by the buddha so everybody under this law whether you practice in buddhism or not it does not matter you are under this law the defeated live in pain the if, if there is a defeated then pain would be there is a universal law so these two are universal law then there is a solution for these two matters what is that solution the solution is given by the buddha what is that uh, happily the peaceful live giving up victory and defeat you don't want to maintain thoughts in your mind desire in your mind so you should give up victory and defeat victory or defeat is a, is is the way how desire working in our mind dear friends desire would be appear in our mind in so many different ways according to the abhidhamma explanation there are 108 ways desire can appear in our mind victory and defeat is the way another way that desire appear in our mind but but what is, what would be the final result conclusion unhappiness suffering pain upset sorrowful situation so 
That is not our goal. Our goal is to be happy, to establish our happiness. So what we should do, we should develop our equanimity. How you can gain your equanimity? If something can do, just practice in meditation, just observing precepts, just uh, practicing generosity. No. You should develop your wisdom. Developing wisdom, you can come to that conclusion. You can develop this quality, equanimity. Equanimity is, the, is equanimity is one of quality that we should develop. How it's come? How would be the nature when you have that quality in your mind? There is nothing to shake your mind. When you are in that state, you don't want to worry about whether it is gain or losing, you don't want to worry about that because you have equanimized mind. Equanimity is very important for us to live happily and peacefully. So, what is the connection with equanimity and wisdom? Because we are working to gain our wisdom, dear friends, when you gain wisdom, through the wisdom you can see the reality. When you're able to see the reality, then you can live happily, peacefully all the time because equanimity is there. You know the reality. Now just think about it. There is a musical instrument. The player who has who well trained, he can play beautiful music using that musical instrument. When he start to play that musical instrument, the sound is very, very sweet. You like to hear it again and again. You are full attached to that sounds. Then there's a person who wanted to see the sound which is coming from that uh, musical instrument. Then as an investigation technique, then he ready to open that musical instruments and take him parts by parts. He's taking out parts by parts, but he couldn't find any significant things there. To have that beautiful, attractive sound, he couldn't find. So then he ready to put into fire making as a pieces to see that sounds, the secret of the sounds, even though he was not, he is not able to see any significant things there. Now that instrument has become ash. Through that ash, he is trying to find no. Therefore, this is this is the way how we can recognize the foolish way. In this world, we are searching our happiness in foolish way, giving objects to eye, ear, nose, tongue, all these bases, using all these bases, giving object to all these bases, we are searching our happiness. This is like, this is equal to like that particular investigation. That person was trying to find where that beautiful sound is coming. What is the significance of that uh, musical instrument to have that kind of attractive music? That person is doing research, doing such uh, foolish things. But as a wise person, we know that beautiful sounds appear in this world, not just because of that instrument. The person who was played, who was playing that musical instrument, his skill was very important. And the, 
and the environment that we had that there calm quiet peaceful environment and also your mind if the first everything was outside but if your mind hanging around with some other objects uh, can you hear that no you can't hear it but your mind also connected there with the with the combination of all these things there was a beautiful sounds you were and you enjoyed very well so in this manner you can see that results the beautiful sounds attractive sounds attractive music is a creation of all these combination you can find through that uh, instrument the sounds the the music the beautiful music everything happen together as a result of all these combination you can be happy you can enjoy therefore friends when we are living in this society we have to keep in our mind all these things are happening as a combination of many thing according to defend in origination imas mean sati idang hoti when this is here then this should be here so seen this nature the reality you can develop your equanimity yes there is gaining something yes it is happening losing something yes it is happening it is also nature gaining or losing any time you can maintain your equanimity through your wisdom because through the wisdom you can you are realizing the nature the universal law all these things are happening combination of many things the particularly in their your mind is very important if you don't have that mind concept the mind uh, peaceful mind happy mind there to enjoy that moment then you can't you will skip that moment because you don't pay attention you don't have any interest interest about that moment whatever the things is whatever the things are outside if your mind is not ready to accept those things how you can enjoy this you can't so now you can see through the wisdom you can see the reality seeing the reality you can maintain equanimity without falling into any extreme in extreme uh, extreme entries this is the victory that i have i can enjoy i can be happy i can celebrate with others or so i am poor i don't have any supports i lost everything i'm a defeater there is no to be upset whether you gain or lose it it does not matter there is no reasons to be upset so now we can see what is our duty what is our responsibility what is our assignment as buddhist follower the teachings of the buddha our assignment is to gain wisdom why we want to gain wisdom to have a equanimity mind equanimity mind equanimity is not itself equanimity is always connecting with these four qualities loving kindness compassion sympathetic joy and equanimity all these four qualities are together so when you are developing your mind to achieve your wisdom to gain your wisdom 
and same time you are developing gaining these four qualities whenever you establish these qualities with you not to lose any way that happen as a result of your enlightenment enlightenment means completely achieve the goal of the buddhist the superb goal attaining enlightenment wisdom when you achieve the wisdom then you are establishing your qualities not to change not to lose anyway not to lose anyway so we are working for that therefore friends as buddhist follower now we know goal so we we not supposed to think about uh, i mean in our mundane life victory or defeat these are not our goal these are not something helpful for us the buddha de delivered this instance to the king there was a king who was planning to have a war so then uh, the buddha said defeating thousands and thousands enemies not the real win real win you should win your mind you, you should develop your insight this is the real win you can't gain real win through killing other living beings defeating other living beings you can win killing your defilements eliminating your defilements establishing your qualities establishing your equanimity sympathetic joy loving kindness and compassion that is our goal that is our ambition that is our path to our liberation therefore friends we practice dhamma to gain these qualities don't forget all the time keep in your mind anyavanta sayan dhammo this dhamma is for the wise people wise people mean that means not the people who gain uh, phd masters and all other degrees from the universities wise person is the person who can think deeply and widely so we are working to gain that quality to have ability to think deeply widely and quickly then we can see things as they are we are not able to see things as they are because of our weakness our lack of thinking ability now keep in your mind let us practice this dhamma to gain that goal that is our purpose of life so so we are working for that even though meditating practicing generosity observing precepts what we are willing we are willing to gain wisdom as we mentioned before wisdom is not appearing in our mind itself you should have concentration concentrated mind is the path for wisdom there is no wisdom without concentration no concentration without wisdom one who has both wisdom and concentration he is close to peace and emancipation keep in your mind all the time and courage yourself determine yourself to practice dhamma thank you very much i think that would be enough for today thank you very much for your participation let us use this opportunity to share merits with others first of all think about uh, departed relatives friends family members and pets who departed name of us by the power of these merits and metta thoughts may they all be well happy and peaceful may they all have may they be able to achieve nibbana having that aspiration share merits with departed ones saying sadhu sadhu whoever is affected covid 19 and any other sicknesses by the power of this merits and metta thoughts may they all be well happy and peaceful 
May they be able to get rid of their suffering and pain, having that aspiration, make blessings upon them, saying, Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. May you all be well, happy, and peaceful. All your wishes come true by the power of these merits and methods. May we all be able to attain ultimate bliss of Nibbana, having that aspiration, say, Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. By means of this meritorious deeds, may I never join with the police. May I join always with the wise until the time attain Nibbana. May the suffering be free from suffering. May the fear struck be free from fear. May the grieving be free from grief. So too may all beings be. From the higher slums of existence to the lowers, may all beings arisen in these realms, with form and without form with perception and without perception, be released from all suffering and attain to perfect peace. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bhante. Sadhu, Sadhu, Thank you, Bhante. 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 Yes. Right. So, and Thank also you, have a wonderful day. Okay. See you. Okay. Bye. Good one.